Th thanks a lot. Uh, I have a question to uh, to Vladimir. Uh, thanks for for the lecture. And I, I mean, I, I think I, I used the death drive as a double-sided figure to to somehow show the destructions of capitalism. But I also agree completely on the view that it actually opens up um, identities and opens up like a new um, horizon for for um, relation ontologies. I, I would completely agree to that. Um, and I have a question because I think the way you come to this idea of new relation relations and new relational ontologies is very different than, than I would do it. So, so I have a question to Lacan, but I really have no, no uh, expertise in Lacan. Uh, uh, there's uh, this uh, very early text from him about the mirror state. And then you have this footnote about the fragmented body that is somehow the fragmented, tortured, polymorphic body. And I mean, in later texts, for example, in Guy Hockengam or Monivitic, you always find somehow an association of the fragmented bodies in association with the death drive. So somehow this idea that, that um, identity is being opened up, also in the idea that body unity is opened up. And I was wondering if this small uh, passage in the early text of uh, Lacan is actually related to the notion of the death drive that he, that he later deploys. No, uh, in the text of the mirror stage, um, Lacan asserts this uh, notion of fragmental body to say something about uh, some phantasms that are, there's some fantasies that show the fragility of the uh, image of proper body. No? But of course, we can say that, let's say, the process of unification of the, of the body through the image of, uh, of ideal, ideal image, it's always um, uh, without the possibility to erase something that is proper to the libidinal body, that is this polymorphic structure. Because uh, fragmentary, there is something like a deficit. That is that sometimes could sound uh, as well. We need to go through a kind of of, uh, of a strong unity or something more unified. No? But we can say that uh, well, there is a polymorphical uh, structure of the body that is pro proper to the libidinal body that will be preserved. And all the problem is which kind of um, of um, unity or or at least which kind of, uh, of, um, of um, determination is possible when uh, we accept, because for Lacan, uh, an ego is a kind of fortress. Uh, an ego is not something that w should be, let's say, reinforced by analytical process, no? but another type of, of synthesis that can come, and this is one of the reasons that he is obliged to use this distinction between ego and subject, but this type, this other type of, of synthesis uh, that could come in an analytical process uh, is, uh, sh should resonate uh, something from this polymorphic structure that is proper to the libidinal body. No? And uh, the interesting thing is, uh, of course, this is only possible uh, through the subjectivation of a death drive. No? Then uh, there, there is a, a, a strong distinction between the relationship uh, between, uh, well, the clinical use of death drive in Lacan and Freud. No? Because for Freud, this is clear. No? Death drive is the limit of, of the pr uh, analytical process of subjectivation, like uh, verbalization, like symbolization, uh, like uh, rem uh, 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 remembration, remembers. Yeah, yeah. And, but it's not the case from Lacan. No? From Lacan, actually, the death drive is something that absolutely internal to the clinical progress. Uh, can you uh, pass on to Toulouse? Hi, thank you. Um, I have uh, questions about um, uh, about the redefinition of freedom as uh, as um, in the way that you redefine freedom. <laughs> um, and uh, how do I get this together? I am in general, I think my most general question is if there isn't a semantic trap in the term freedom where like very different things are all gathered under that term that do not necessarily have anything to do with each other. Um, you know, like I, I always find like Isaiah Berlin's like distinction pretty helpful between positive and negative freedom, like freedom from and like Freedom too, but you could also think of like Spinoza's freedom of like 
that only applies to the divine, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But you seem to like. It seemed to me as though you were slipping, but in your usage of freedom, between various registers of the term, so to speak. Um, and I wonder how much um, how much of your talk is uh, actually surfing on that. That's well, my that's my first that, that's one question. Okay. But let me let me try a second one. The second one is um, so you're trying to um, to make a case that um, that uh, the mishap is actually the the the, the, the paradigmatic moment of, of freedom. Um, and there seems to be a link of that to, to desire. And I wonder if you could spell out where that comes from. Because I, I would think that, um, I mean, the, most, the, most, the, the, the easiest way to like, argue for that would be to, be, would be to say, well, you know, there are like, suppressed desires um, which, which cannot happen, and, and these are then actualized, right? And in, in, that, in that way, I wouldn't know why to call this freedom, but it seems to me as though you were arguing for a deeper connection, where like, where this, where like a, a pure negativity or something like that in the structuring moment of subjectivity is manifesting itself, and that that somehow um, unleashes desire or like unleashes libido or something. But I'm not sure why that should why that should be the case. So I thought maybe you can elaborate on that. Yeah, that's great. Um, so the first, first thing, I, 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 I tried to be clear, and maybe I, I equivocated at times, so I apologize for that, but I tried to be clear between liberal conception of freedom and unconscious freedom, which I oppose. So, you know, okay, like you, I guess you could say, like, why use the term freedom? Because it's so weighted and, yeah, whatever. I mean, I guess I still have a... I, 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 I have a real problem with... Uh, letting the other side take the terms that are really originally emancipatory terms. And so I guess I want to say, like, yeah, okay, the liberal conception of freedom gets taken over, but that there's still something valuable about the term to try to take back. And so I don't know. I mean, I, I think people can disagree about that, and that's, that's fine. That's just... I think there's something valuable about, about staking out certain terms, like equality, I... I still have something invested in that too. Um, I, I totally take that point. I would just think at some point ter terms are also used up. Yeah, of course. Yeah, no, I don't. I don't disagree with that. Yeah, sure, maybe. I mean, and then you know, and then, and then I'll be sent to the gulag, and that's that's fine. Yeah, I, I understand. Yeah, uh, 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 but but the other question is more interesting to me, and I mean, not that question was good too, but. Uh, uh, and I would, so definitely not this like, uh, because desire is transgressive, that's why, I, it's definitely not that point. It is, it is, I think it's grounded and I think it's, it's because, and I think this is maybe the unique discovery of psychoanalysis that, that, that we are neither biological nor cultural beings and it's not that we're some amalgamation of the two, it's that we're in fact a collision of the two and I think that idea is that's I take as the genesis of subjectivity, and I think it's the it's the genesis of desire, and desire emerges through some originary loss of nothing, and that nothing. And so every time that that this is how I see it, every time that that nothing gets reasserted, that that is that brings us back to the this originary moment of our of our. Of, of our subjectivity, and so that's I, I see that as the the moment of the most authentic moment, the most the, the freest moment, I guess. So that's how I link that all together. And, and you mean what, what do you mean? What exactly? Sorry to to like confuse the questions again. What exactly is the moment of freedom? Well, there? Okay, is that why free freedom? From the okay, social yes, order, so no. or is that free to like? libidinal communism or is that like you know like freedom i don't understand well i mean it more in a kind of radical negativity because it's more it's more of a freedom of like it's the moment at which i think it's a freedom of openness like that like it's a freedom at which neither the biological nor the cultural has a hold on me and that's why i think it's a moment of freedom because both both those things which are determinate are not that's a point at which when they collide they're not determinate so that's why i want to stick to the idea of freedom, but, okay. 
Yeah. Uh, next uh, question. Raise your hands. That was an imperative. <laughs> Please. Oh, okay. <laughs> But do you want to continue the debate? Because, uh, I, I mean, I have, uh, I have one uh, follow-up on, uh, on, on this one, if I may, then. Um, uh, well, freedom is a figure of negativity. I guess that's, that's, the, that's what you uh, both now uh, clarified. Uh, and I was wondering, well, also you, you were talking about compulsion, uh, the question of com compulsion and the, the link to, free yes. to freedom. Um, uh, and since, since you brought up the liberal conception of, uh, of freedom, uh, I, I had to think of a, uh, of a very peculiar moment from Adam Smith that kind of also uh, shows that there is something that, that, that the liberal conception of freedom might have been built on, a, on an exclusion of a, of a pec peculiarity in, in Smith. Um, when he talks about... <coughs> Uh, invisible hand, uh, yeah. provi providence, uh, and so on. Uh, there is one kind of uh, s always symptomatic moment. What's the function of this? It's not self-regulation -reg of the market. It's not this, uh, I, uh, well, this apologetics of free markets that, have, that has been derived from it. It's basically the sabotage of self-interest. So I had to think uh, on that uh, uh, when you were talking about the psychoanalytic contribution to the, to, to the conception of freedom. Adam Smith puts it very clearly. Uh, the intervention of, of uh, providence or the inmixing, the, the intervention of the invisible hand of the market uh, uh, actually uh, sabotages the egotistic pursuit of the rich uh, 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 in their... Uh, you know, following the self uh, self interest, so it's basically a sabotage of egoism. No, uh, that's a, yeah, a that's, compulsion. Yeah, that's amazing. And so, so you're right. So there is this kind of like repressed within the liberal conception. But you know, Smith even also says that 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 the rich have to be duped into thinking that additional accumulation will bring them more happiness, even though that everybody knows that it doesn't. So, the, 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 like, he has some fascinating, you know, awarenesses within his text, I think. Yeah. 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 Can I say something? Because um, I was a little bit surprised by your way to try to preserve the Kantian uh, notion of uh, the Kantian relation to freedom. Because uh, I ask myself is if actually what you were trying to say or to show in Freud is the freedom devoid of autonomy. And it's a, it's a, it's a distinction between freedom and autonomy. No? And in this way, uh, oh, uh, I, I really don't understood why to preserve the Kantian uh, 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 reference in this debate. Because uh, uh, I ask myself if actually Freud doesn't open us to a kind of uh, freedom that would be a heteronomy without servitude, and not exactly something that could be understood in the field of the discussion on autonomy. Yeah, but, okay. No, I, I, that's a really interesting, I like that idea, except isn't, like, like, isn't autonomy for Kant the elimination of the pathological, right? Like, that's the, isn't that how he defines, like, heteronomy is, when we allow the pathological to come in, right? Yeah, but he, 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 he um, defend autonomy as a self-legislation, no? uh, a self-government. And uh, I could put, let's say, this uh, classical Adornian question. Even when we are talking on freedom, we talk about law. What is something that we should think about it? No, yeah, right, I don't disagree with that. I'm just, I guess, I, I guess my only... I see what you're saying, but I, I do think this notion of being like, like something, and I, I guess the link to Kant for me is that something to lift us out of our, of our pathological inclination. And I think that's the, where I see the link. Yeah. And, and, that, and I think, I guess for me, Kant's the, what he, and I, I, I mean, does he mean by autonomy some kind of self-actualization. I'm not sure that that's what he means. I think he means like the, a kind of nothing, allowing nothing heteronomous to enter in, 
right? Like, and so the heteronymous would be the pathological. And I feel like that's where the link to death drive really comes in because it doesn't death drive also get the pathological, it, 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 it rejects, the, it, it gets that out of the equation. Yeah, but it don't, doesn't reject the heteronomy. Well, <laughs> because heteronomy in this case will be a kind of external causality of actions. No? means the idea that I, I'm affected by something that external to my self-determination. Yeah, okay, but, but, okay, but doesn't it, when you, like, it, see, I don't know, I, feel, I guess I feel like death drive does in some way reject heteronomy because the, it, it, it said, like, it, like, it, it says these other, the heteronymous conditions or determinants are not going to count for what I'm, <laughs> for what's driving me, doesn't it? But if this is the question, why yeah. to talk about death? Because maybe death is the, the most clear figure of heteronomy that we know. Yeah, but <laughs> why didn't I talk about death? Huh? No, okay. no, why, why we were talking about death when we talk about death drive? Well, uh, yeah. Because if you put heteronomy outside the notion yeah. of the drive, yeah, it's, I think that is even the notion of death that will go through the window. I, I don't disagree with that, but I mean, I think that, you know, like, but I, I think not death according to the way that you read it in your talk. Like, mm -hmm. symbolic death, I don't think requires, I think, I think precisely this insistence on symbolic death does get heteronomy out of the, out of the equation, doesn't it? I think it, I mean, you're right about real biological death. Of course, I agree. But symbolic death, I think, I think that is not a heteronymous consideration. Or maybe it's the most heteronomous okay, idea maybe, that we have. Maybe, exactly. maybe. Yeah. I would maybe say the opposite. Yeah. Okay. No, I, I take your point. Yeah. Heteronomy to, the, um, to all the social modes of determination and identity. No? It means heteronomy, why? It's because it's, it's not exactly a causa sui, uh, the motivation of action is not something that uh, it's my own causality, but is a radical external causality that uh, affects me in a way that uh, uh, if I integrate that, I should, um, I should disappear as a person. No? person as, let's say, a subject of actions, because that's something that, that, that acts in me, no? then uh, I, I really don't, I really can't, can't have another definition of heteronomy than that. I think this is the classical definition of heteronomy. No? My, my feeling is that, like, I mean, if you're talking about heteronomy, you you're talking about, like, like, an external influence on something. And I think my feeling is, I'm not sure if I'm completely wrong but my feeling is that you're just like this you might you might disagree about or you might not exactly talk about the same uh, agent or like not agent but like the same thing that like something is external to so I yeah I mean there's no I mean like if, if you're a Deridian you might think that there's heteronomy as such mm -hmm. right but if you're not a, a Deridian then you need to define uh, then you need to define uh, the, the the object of the externality, and I didn't think either of you did that. Yes, but uh, but but this but th this doesn't change the, the the idea that we are talking about the agency that cannot be thinked upon the notion of autonomy. We shouldn't. Why get agency? Why get agency? Because agency is a is a is a is a fuzzy word that like everybody has like other thoughts about. No, but what I just meant is like if, if, if you want to de define something external to something, yeah. you need to say very exactly what, what you mean that the thing is external to. You know, if you say like a self and then you say like, yeah, but then like the externality yeah, of course, is of course. in the but self. The, yeah, no, like, and, uh, what is the I, I, self I, I, here? What is I, the consistent self? I see your of, point, la, la, of course, la, la. of course. And I feel like, you yeah. know, I, I, like my, my impression was just that you're not talking about the same thing. That's, that's yeah, what yeah. I'm saying. No, but the, the, the interesting thing about drive is, of course, this is not a will. There's not another will. That's something external. There is, but th this is exactly a kind of uh, uh, non-personal process of motivation of action. No? Uh -huh. now, now, as we are approaching the end of the discussion, <laughs> you're, you're, you want to par participate in it. Okay, two short questions. 
Okay, yeah. I'm having trouble as well with, the pers with um, considering what is unconscious as freedom because just because it isn't external, it feels, and it's coming internal, but it feels just as unfree as, as anything that comes from outside because it, it's an it that seems to control me against my will. I mean, I do stuff not because I want to. And, and the only time where it would feel maybe I, I could have some freedom would be through an analysis that would free me from my own unconscious. So I found it hard to understand why this, because it's a bit like her question. Yeah, so okay, right, so why call that freedom? Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I guess that was part of my point was that I think we should think of freedom as precisely those moments that we feel compelled, but not by some external force like a soldier saying to me, you gotta go march in a straight line, but instead, these moments at which we take ourselves by surprise through our compulsion. So I feel like the, the, that to me the liberal idea of freedom is, uh, the, and that was the point of the first part of my talk, is so wrapped up with the idea of the good, which I think Freud shows is illusory. So, it's, so that idea of freedom is completely unsustainable. So I, I, part of me was trying to think, and, and I also think that idea of freedom is so linked with capitalism that it's, it's a problem for that reason as well. So I, I, I'm trying to think of a, because if there's not freedom, then I think there's no possibility for acting contrary to one's determinants, right? And so I, and so I, I wanted to think about what would freedom then look like? And I, I think one of the things it looks and feels like is it feels like a compulsion. So I feel like it, it feels like something that, and, and I, I guess my point would be just to, and I think that's what psychoanalysis in some way is. It's, it's, it's saying, you know, but that notion, the notion of like, you are that. I like that idea, like you are that, like that, that, is, that you are that, the, you know, the, the moment of the S is, that, that's you. And so I, I feel like that, I do, so that, and I think there's an idea of freedom in that. I, I mean, it's at your point completely about liberal capitalism <laughs> that I, I, I just don't find much freedom in the, that there has to be, that there's not much freedom in the S because that controls me, that it feels, it controls me just as much and, and it feels unfree as well. Well, well I, really I, right, 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 right. <laughs> no, I agree, but I just, I, I just, I guess my point is to dissociate. I mean, I, I agree completely with your foot, with the liberal capital. Gotcha, yeah. gotcha. Yeah, well, I just want I was just trying to dissociate yeah. the feeling of freedom from the act of it because, because the, you know, like to, 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 like I think that's one of the ideas of, main ideas of psychoanalysis is to get us to think like that, like that what we, what we feel egoistically is, is, is the most misleading thing of all. And so, I don't no, know. no, I accept that completely, yeah. Okay. Uh, let's, we have one more, uh, last question and then. Okay, thank you. Uh, this is also for uh, Todd, and I hope it's not uh, redundant at this point, but uh, your talk um, um, reminded me of, a, of this project by Frank Ruder, uh, his book Abolishing Freedom, um, very much related, where he, um, he basically states that the freedom at stake in psychoanalysis is something different, like from a, capa like a certain idea of a capacity, a freedom as a capacity of my consciousness, and that um, he places this in the bigger critique of a, in a certain Aristotelian tradition of like uh, of freedom, um, and and his like um, provocative point somehow really hard to grasp is like that uh, that freedom in a certain way um, how he conceptualizes it is not in contradiction to determinism, and he talks about Freud um, in the last chapter of the book, and it makes a point with. Um, the psychoanalytic technique of uh, the free association, which is precisely, in a certain way, not free, because um, um, you know we uh, the whole idea is like to suspend a certain kind of critical instance and then uh, determine that unconscious uh, thoughts pop up. Um, and what? Yeah, my my there was maybe just comment that I would. Uh, maybe ask what in what relation do you 
see yourself through Frank Rudy? Do you have um, you know um, a certain connection to his project? Um, yeah, and his radicality of like yeah. you know <laughs> technology is uh, uh, con uh, expressing or uh, conceptualizing a freedom that is not in contradiction to determinism. Yeah, but yeah, it's like, I think it's that's kind right. of really paradoxical. Like uh, right, I mean, I, I know through the thought. Yeah. I do know Frank's book, and I I do see what I'm saying as sort of in line with that. And I mean, I I guess I wasn't the only thing is I'm not thinking of like he's his larger project is to say the only way to save freedom is through philosophical determinism and th I mean that's not my larger pro I mean I'm like more thinking of it in terms of the subject but yeah I don't see a I see a link between those two things definitely yeah thanks thank you very much uh...